This is a Mark V GTI, and we're gonna take it from front wheel drive to rear wheel drive. While it seems like it would be a simple undertaking, it is a pretty serious task and is not for the faint of heart. This car started out with stock 201 horsepower and now has just under 500 wheel horsepower. Being longtime VW and Audi guys, we love these cars, but VW has only produced front wheel drive and all wheel drive cars. Since we're not master fabricators, a completely custom build was out of reach for us. But since we're still dumb enough to try, knowing all that information, our question is, can we build a rear wheel drive GTI using OEM VW and Audi parts that don't require major fabrication? The plan we have is simple. We're gonna use all wheel drive parts to make a rear wheel drive vehicle, including a VW R32, an Audi TT, and maybe a smattering of other cars. This is what the all wheel drive system on an R32 would look like. You would have a transmission at the front and a prop shaft that goes back to the rear differential. Then you would have axles that come out of the transmission to drive the front wheels and axles that come out of the differential to drive the rear wheels. You would think that all we would need to do would be remove the front axles and then you can make a rear wheel drive, but you would be wrong. The only all wheel drive system that would easily bolt into this car is known as Haldex, AKA, Four wheel drive. And this system is different than traditional all wheel drive, which is where things get tricky. Most of the time, Haldex all wheel drive cars function as a front wheel drive vehicle. At the back of the prop shaft is a clutch like this one. It engages and disengages the rear wheels as the all wheel drive is needed so it is not a full-time system. Because of this, if you remove the front axles from the car, the car would not drive at all. That is where this controller comes into play, which controls the Haldex system. This controller should allow us to engage the Haldex clutch full-time to make this car rear wheel drive. If you're still not sure exactly how this system functions, we made a video that compared Haldex all wheel drive to traditional all wheel drive, and it will help explain this full wheel drive system a little bit better. Now, a little more on this car. If you followed our content for a while, this car might look familiar to you. We did a seven episode series building the engine and big turbo setup on this car. And while the content isn't up to our current day standards, we'll link to it in the description where you can check out that video series. So this is our pile of parts, and what you don't see here, will be taken from this beauty. This is a Mark V R32. From the factory, this would have come with a 3.2 liter VR6, a DSG automatic transmission, and all wheel drive. This car has no engine or transmission. It also doesn't have an interior and has been a home for a few species of arachnid and bees. This is a Mark V GTI with a 2.0 T FSI engine. It's been uh, fitted with a big turbo and all the accoutrement around that. Uh, it also has the six-speed front-wheel drive transmission that we upgraded with a limited slip differential from Wavetrack that is going to be useless by the time we're done here. So the goal of this project is to take the rear drivetrain from this R32 and put it in our GTI, turn it into a rear-wheel drive drift machine. We'll be releasing one video every day until this project gets completed, so make sure you subscribe and check out our build on this car. Maybe it's going to blow up. We don't actually know if we're going to be able to successfully make this rear-wheel drive. Make we sure. got some spare parts in case we do. Follow along to find out. Okay, now we can actually start actually working. Okay, so I think the plan, well, it depends. Do you want to start with this car or this car? I think we should start with, the, with this car. Okay, that one's probably going to be a little bit more challenging because yes. it's all crunchy. So to start on this disgusting Mark V, we're going to drop the exhaust. This will give us access to the rear subframe, differential, prop shaft. We also are going to be working on jack stands. As you're going to see, we're not working at our shop because we uh, have real work to do there, and we can't tie up lifts. I'm very worried about being under here. Okay. For, for animals. <laughs> there could be an animal situation. If that happens, but... I hope there isn't. There, there we go. go. All right. You know how we're gonna fix the uh, oxygen sensor situation? We're gonna cut the wire. Snip, snip. Just like when I went to go see the doctor, Snips. Oxygen sensor, my boss. People are gonna be so mad at us for just cutting all this stuff. Oh yeah, for sure. If you get mad at us for cutting oxygen sensors that are used on multiple hundred thousand mile engine, whatever, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, all right? Yeah. This is an exhaust for an R32. It's had its uh, resonators deleted its life. <laughs> But what is that? That's another resonator. Resonator muffler. Yeah, now we just gotta drop the subframe bolts and that's it. Hopefully this will protect us from dying. The spray <laughs> all over your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 
As you're gonna see a lot through the disassembly of this Mark V R32, this car is disgusting. It sat around forever. And uh, yeah, we dealt with a lot of nastiness uh, laying on the ground and getting rained on by, by dirt and debris. Ah. <laughs> The car. car shook a little bit on that one. It was a little unnerving. <laughs> this might get a little spicy spicy. That's a spicy meatball. <laughs> like bump it down. <laughs> Don't just uh, blast it out. Send it. <laughs> this is the last bolt. So there you go. We're getting a little weebly with our car on our jack stands here. <laughs> well, it's because they're they're not level. If you didn't know, weebles wobble. Well, luckily, they don't fall down. I feel like we're still getting held up on some. Oh, it doesn't look like it. Look at all this suspension travel. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna release the drive shaft up front here in the engine bay. It's just really to feed it back so that it can move freely as he rolls that whole setup backwards. We're rolling back. Okay, so now we need to Drop the gas tank because we're swapping the gas tank from one side to the other. The Seven damage choices. to this car could be part of our problem, uh, but we first need to see if we can pump everything out of the gas tank using the fuel pump in the car. We're gonna try to do that. Uh, the damage to this side might be a problem because the battery is underneath there. This black box right here is actually the battery box and it's accessed through the top, which uh, we open our sweet hatch here. See the whole body is just, <laughs> Completely bent over on top of the... We take away our, our, our shrubbery. A shrubbery! Yeah, so. That's, that's a, what I call battery protection. Can we talk to this car? Oh, we're not gonna be able to turn it on. We have ignition. We don't have a key. That's the remix to ignition. You have to jump it. You pop them fresh out of the kitchen. Hot and fresh out the kitchen. All right, well, so much for that plan. That <laughs> ship cut sailed. See ya. Not gonna happen. Now we're just gonna drop the gas tank. We'll have to worry about draining it another way. So let's go drop that gas tank. Everybody gone surfing. Surfing USA. <laughs> what are we gonna do if this thing has a full tank of gas? We're gonna hate it. Yeah, we're gonna be salty. We're real upset about it. The quarter panel right where the fuel filler net comes through was bent. So we're gonna have to try to figure out if we can get this thing free. We can try to pull this out. Oh, wow. Well, I basically just broke it, so I could have done that before you took the screw out. Because we were trying to make sure we didn't damage the fuel filler neck, we needed to salvage that to swap the gas tank over. We spent a long time on this fuel filler cap area, and uh, yeah, so you don't witness the struggle, but we struggled quite a bit. And opening that little door thing that you see here would have made our lives way easier. Oh, hey, okay. could have just done that the whole time. There we go. The whole time I could have done that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's sharp. Yeah. Don't don't do that. What you doing there, climby? Yeah. Ow. <laughs> God. Really, the most unpleasant part is I put my knee on this, and it really hurt. This plastic piece that's sticking up from the backrest that's intended for child latch systems. So child safety has ruined my life. What we likely should do is just unbolt the gas tank and see what's hanging us up. Yeah. I think that's probably the best course of action at this point. I'm gonna loosen these straps so we can try to at least do something productive. I've almost got this pump off. With what, a crowbar? <laughs> Recommended removal procedure. May or may not be, but it's almost off. The approved method. All right, so the gas tank on this car, Sorry. because it's all wheel drive, straddles between that drive shaft and the differential, so it kind of has a hump over. So what I should be holding on here, and I'm not even positive of holding on it, is the middle that kind of bridges this both sides together. I'm taking a bath and gas for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> so right here I had disconnected the fuel lines from the fuel filter, and since the gas tank was tilted down, we were trying to remove it, the fuel was just pouring out of that thing on me. It smelled like turpentine and it's terrible. Who knows how long that fuel's been sitting in that tank. And I, as the person in charge, I didn't pull rank and make him do the sh job. It just so happened that uh, he got the short end of the stick on that one. I would rather be where I am than where he is. <laughs> Me too. Just yank it. Out. There you go. I, I'm just going to let this down. <laughs> well, we're in the drain pan. I see that. 
<laughs> That's kind of all we can do. There we go. It's got to be the same. There, it is. there we go. Boom. Snip, snip. Snip, snap, snip, snap, snip, snap. The note that we have to deal with for getting this swapped over is the rear brake line on this one we cut from the R32. We have to make sure we disconnect, snap it out of this subframe assembly on the GTI before we take it out and leave it in the car so that when we put this one back in, we can snap it into this system. So let's uh, go ahead and get through that. Wow, these things are real smoked. They were formerly front tires, which you can cut to the footage where we made them look like this. Nathan was in the car with me. I, didn't, I was not part of no such thing. The one interesting thing about this side is we could act like a bunch of Neanderthals when we were taking apart the R32, and now we actually have to be careful <laughs> to not destroy things because they will make our life more costly and difficult. All right, I want to take this exhaust off. Paul, can you uh, grab me those exhaust hanger pliers, please? Well, there's spider webs already formed under here. That makes me feel great. Oh, I almost smashed my face. Oh. Look how nice this exhaust is. It's yeah. gonna go straight in the trash now. Why? It's not gonna fit anymore. I'm kidding about it going straight in the trash, but it's straight useless. Now that we got that wheel off, we can disconnect the ABS sensor here, the brake line, Max already disconnected the hard line and disconnected it from the subframe assembly. We gotta take our e-brake cables off and then we should be good to unbolt the uh, the main cradle bolts and then also the trailing arm bolts and then this thing should drop down. So we didn't really show you this on the R32, but there's four of them on each side of the car. They use the same mounting system from car to car, so, so it makes this swap possible. And we're off. All right, so now we can take the subframe off. Is this gonna be fun? Mm, hopefully not. Did you? firmly place that jack where it needs to be? It's fairly firmly placed. <laughs> okay. If we just unbolt this as it sits, it's probably just gonna fall over backwards. Oh, it's gonna fall on top of the jack? Potentially. <laughs> uh, there's like what is that gonna do? Of a drop. What is <laughs> I think we're just gonna have to go for it. No, we're not gonna do it. You're gonna destroy your brake lines. We can get another floor jack if we need to. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> I mean, it could hit me in the face. We didn't properly support this before we started to disconnect <laughs> everything, so now we're in a, a little bit of a pickle. I really think it'll be fine. It really would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> it would probably be mildly exciting, but I don't think it would cause any problems. So what we were arguing about here is you saw just a second ago when I unclipped the brake line that crosses over the subframe. We did not put the jack in a good spot at all to unhook this before we took all the bolts out. All wheel drive one, we just held it up by the diff and it was centered and everything was mostly balanced. On the front wheel drive one, there was not a spot to do that at. And I just wanted to lower the whole thing down and kind of let it fall off the jack and thought it would be fine. He was concerned that the brake line was going to get mangled. I really don't think that we should do this this way. It's going to be fine. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna be It's fine. gonna be fine. I sure hope that's gonna make the bridge. The jack is so silly. This is possible. This may not be the correct method to remove this. <laughs> if we go down, it's just gonna fall off the front. Uh, okay, well, what do we need to do? Uh, I guess put a jack in the front. <laughs> oh no. That's not gonna work right there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. I think we would have been done by now if we left it where I wanted to. Yeah, we might have broken something now. I don't think so. We're gonna synchronize swimming, lower this down. Maybe. Lower the jacks down Or potentially put other people in danger, mostly myself, probably. <laughs> <laughs> this shot looks so stupid. This looks so bad. You ready? Yeah. All right, I'm stopping. I'm I want to check on the brake. <laughs> you appear not to be. Oh, you got a little premature on me there. Uh oh, hold up. I'm going down here. You're way lower than me. Hold up. <laughs> hold up. This is a race. 
<laughs> I've stopped. So. Uh, I, Your one is so jank. Uh, you need to go down more, Paul. Uh, I'm not even on anything currently. <laughs> hey! Oh my god. This one doesn't move the way the other one did because because it can't clear because the car is not as high. That one doesn't have a bumper on. Oh, that's true. It, they're about they're very similar. Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So the bumper the bumper is are preventative. So we can do one of two things: we can remove the rear bumper, or we can unbolt the wheels and put put try to put the rear subframe on this rolly guys. That would probably be the easiest way. Bro. Well. Oh, oh, oh. No, hold up. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Alright. Piece okay. of cake. We're dropping the fuel tank. So we're this fuel tank. We're gonna get this party started. <laughs> I'm we're dropping, dropping the hammer, Harry. Right, where's that? <laughs> I don't really know what it's held up on. Okay, let me have a look. I used to be a technician. <laughs> is this wire? <laughs> there it is. He, he did it without me. He didn't even need it. He used to he be a technician. He didn't need a technician. He didn't even need it. He used to be a technician. <laughs> I, just, I play a technician on TV sometimes. Oh. Oh, you've removed the entire assembly. This is a leak detection pump. This is what tells your gas tank whether it's leaking or not. So. Yeah, this is so you don't leak fuel everywhere and explode your car. Oh. We're getting rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Check it out. Uh, oh, it appears. Oh, God. I'm just going to move that out of the way. <laughs> While we're oh, my God. Are you, sweeping. Are you serious? <laughs> Nathan's nervous. <laughs> Cause you just did the... You just did the thing. <laughs> All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. In this episode, we got the two cars disassembled. In our next episode coming out tomorrow, you'll watch us compare some of this stuff and weigh some of the components and reinstall them in the GTI to get us to our rear wheel drive setup.